Hi, my name is Maisha from the Rock the Bike events team, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble a Fender Blender Pro. To open the box, note that you won't need to cut any cardboard or remove the staples. In fact, the less you damage the box, the more you can reuse it later. The box is a big clamshell and you'll only need to cut the tape. With the box upright, cut the tape at the edges. Now lower the box carefully to the ground and open the hinge top. Make sure the bottom panel is facing you. Get organized by removing the parts and seeing what you have. Having some table space will help. Leave the chain bagged and zip tied until you get to that step. The reusable zip ties have a thumb tab for releasing. Save your packaging if you want to safely move and store your Pro after your event. To attach the crossbeam, first place the frame on its side on a soft surface like carpet or cardboard. You can use the box to prop it up at the correct angle. If you want to be able to use easy rolling transport wheels, face the wheel sockets forward. Using the smaller pair of bolts and washers, connect the crossbeam to the frame. Don't fully tighten the bolts until both are threaded in. The same hex wrench can be used in two ways, for speed and for torque. Looking at the hex wrench as an L, insert the long end of the L into the bolt first. This can help you thread it in quickly. Start and thread in both bolts this way. Now switch the wrench, inserting the short end and holding the long end so that you can get maximum torque for the last couple turns. This is an important part to secure tightly. To attach the rear legs, first turn the frame upright and set it down gently on the chain ring. Without lifting the frame yet, place the rear legs around the frame. From right to left, put the front bolt through the right leg, through the frame, and into the threads in the left leg. Get the threads started about four turns. Check to make sure the threads are engaged by lifting from the left. If you miss the threads, the left side of the rear leg will pop out of alignment. Lift the frame until you can pop in the other bolt. The bolt will hold position so you can grab the hex wrench. Lift the frame again to take the weight off the threads while you tighten. Thread the bolt in all the way, but don't crank it down just yet. Switch back to the front bolt. Thread it in all the way. Now hold the wrench for torque and tighten it hard. Position your body and the wrench so that you can push down hard. Now do your high torque turns on the rear bolt. Push and pull near the seat posts to check for play. Identify the right side pedal by its sticker or stamp. The left pedal normally comes installed. Thread the right pedal into the right crank arm by hand. Once the threads are started, tighten with the 15 millimeter wrench. For maximum torque, rotate the crank and pedal to the back so that you can push on the wrench. Push down hard, it needs to be really tight. If you do ever need to remove or install the left pedal, note that it is reverse threaded. It will tighten counterclockwise, the opposite of what you're used to. If your frame is equipped with folding pedals, they can be unfolded by hand. If you purchased a generator wheel, please refer to its assembly instructions. To install the standard front wheel, first insert the wheel skewer through the axle. Make sure the spring cones of the skewer are pointing inward, then tighten the nut three turns. Position the left pedal towards the back of the frame. The chain needs to be one simple loop for the next step to work. If your chain has small additional loops, it helps to try to expand them and move them towards each other to detangle. Loop the chain over the chain ring and onto the chain guard. Insert the wheel through the front legs and loop the chain over the teeth of the wheel's cog. Lift the wheel and slide the axle into the wheel mounting slots. Pull the wheel towards you until the chain is taut, then align the wheel in the frame. Now it's time to tighten the axle skewer. It can be helpful to have a friend assist you during this step. Holding the wheel with your knees, put the hex wrench into the skewer with one hand while your finger tightens the skewer nut in your other hand until it won't turn anymore. Check alignment one more time, now tighten hard with the hex wrench. The chain should not sag, and the pedal should be able to move freely. It's easy to see if the chain is too loose, but it's harder to see if it's too tight. Check it by feel using the pedals. If you feel resistance when turning the pedals backwards, which usually only shows up in one part of their rotation, the chain is too tight. It's important that your tire is pumped up before blending. Give it a quick check. 
it should feel difficult to squeeze in your fingers. If it's flat or low, pump it to 60 PSI. Open the seat post lever and insert the seat post a few inches while pulling the ring. Let go of the ring and let it pop into the groove. The ring is not part of adjusting the seat height for different riders. It only gets used when removing or inserting the seat post. If you have a screw instead of a ring, line up the groove and thread in the screw all the way. The quick release lever works using a clamping force. You won't have to spin it or turn it in normal use. You should be able to raise and lower the seat without resistance when the quick release lever is open. Clamping the lever requires some force, but it shouldn't be painful or difficult to close it all the way. To adjust the clamping force, use the small hex wrench to tighten or loosen the adjustment screw, then test it again. Using the 6mm hex wrench, loosen the two side bolts of the stem and point it forward. If it's difficult to turn, some leverage may help. Use your pedal wrench as a lever. Unscrew the four bolts holding the stem plate to the stem. It's possible to avoid grease by leaving the bolts in their holes and lifting off the plate as you unscrew the last one. Place the handlebars in the half round of the stem, centered but hanging down. You'll set the angle later. Lift the stem plate with bolts in their holes, align the bolts with the holes, and use the wrench to get the thread started. Only a few turns each. Now, tighten each bolt a few more turns, still not setting them at their full tightness. Set the handlebars to level. Before giving the bolts their final tightening turns, check to see if the gap at the top and the bottom is about equal. Finish by firmly tightening the four bolts at the plate and the two side bolts as well. Test your handlebars by trying to move them up and down and left to right. If they move, realign them and tighten the bolts some more. You'll need to set the roller pressure in order to blend. Loosen the two wing nuts on the upper platter by one or two turns and turn the platter counterclockwise. The roller should be pushing hard into the tire. The bottom platter stays fixed. The tire will be pushing back against you. While holding the position, tighten the wing nuts. You will be able to see a deflection in the tire from the roller when done correctly. Test the roller pressure by squeezing the roller hard with one hand while moving the tire with the other. If the tire slips easily, you'll need to increase the roller pressure. Now look from the side to make sure the roller is directly over the axle. Adjustments can be made where the bottom platter attaches to the mounting plate and where the mounting plate attaches to the frame. You can move your Fender Blender Pro by using the easy rolling transport wheels or by rolling on the main wheel. You can even tow your Pro with a trailer kit. Now get ready to blend. Seat height is important for a rider's power and comfort. Set the seat around waist level. Look for a slight bend in the knee at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Soft ingredients on bottom, harder ingredients on top. <laughs> Adjust the seat for each rider. Beautiful. Wow. Nice. Good work. Cheers. You Cheers. Too. <laughs>